Testing. Is it working? One, two, three. I think we're gonna have to move this mic. Hello. Hold Hello? on a second. Hold on. Uh, there. Can you all hear me? Is no, this okay? I don't like this very phallic visual over my. Well, do you want to swap so that there's a phallic visual over my? <laughs> I don't feel like that's better. <laughs> well. Can you put it down and up? I mean, I don't want to screw up everything. Is this better? Lower? Lower. Or higher. <laughs> this is great. Okay. All right. Because I, I think it picks up sound like right here. Right. Because it's a microphone. <laughs> That's how microphones Well, no, no, no. Work. I mean, there's a specific zone. There's right, a zone. Right in front of the microphone. <laughs> yeah. So if we move it too low, then we're going to be like, we're going to miss it. We're going to be like how? We're going to be like <laughs> up here and then like we're going to miss it. You can't do stuff like that. Okay. All right. All right. This is good? Okay. So, welcome everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's. Um, welcome to another Healthy Gamer GG stream. My name is Alok Kanoja. Just a reminder that uh, although I'm a psychiatrist, nothing intended, uh, nothing on stream today is intended to be taken as medical advice. Um, everything is intended to be for educational and entertainment purposes only. And today, for fun. 
especially for fun. So last year, uh, Kruthi and I did a Valentine's Day stream together. And so we're going to do that again this year. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to be looking at some people and I guess we're going to be giving them relationship advice. But before we do that, I think a couple of announcements. Um, As always. So, uh, yeah. So, Kruthi, you want to start off? Sure. So, it's um, so great to see everyone in chat today. It's been a little while for me. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you for everyone who's been expressing support and offering feedback over the past few weeks. You know, since we started two and a half years ago, we've been thinking always, how can we make mental health more approachable? And the truth of it is that the mental health system is overwhelmed, you know, and nobody knows this better than who the people that work in mental health. So that's kind of always been our compass for where we fit into this landscape. Yeah. So just a, a little bit about that. So, you know, when we started doing this work, um, we didn't really do it in a vacuum. And I think this is something that a lot of people lose sight of. So we regularly consult with industry, other practitioners, professional associations, um, both nationally and internationally about the work that we're doing. And I think the key thing is that um, I think what, the reason we started doing this work is because at the end of the day, I've always believed that mental health is more than treating clinical illness. And if you look at like parts of society, you know, we have doctors who can do gastric bypass surgery and we have nutritionists and personal trainers that can help you exercise and sort of take care of your health. And so I think what we've really sort of found at Healthy Gamer and a, a big part of my own journey has been sort of understanding that mental health is a continuum that includes sometimes medical stuff. But actually what I think is really missing society-wide is like the way that we support our mental health. Um, and this has been kind of our North Star from the beginning. And I think it's also what makes the AOE approach so great because, you know, mental health doesn't just have to be sad. It can be social, it can be interactive, fun, and sometimes it's super hype. Memish. Memish. Um, so for us, it's always been more than medicating a mental illness. It's about creating this um, mental wellness ecosystem. And so this subclinical space is where we have chosen to dedicate ourselves. Um, and one thing, you know, I just want to emphasize really quickly is that nothing about the past few weeks really changes our commitment to people's privacy, um, especially I know there's a lot of conversation about Ruckpole right now, um, but we're still committed to keeping his private life private. Um, and we're really starting to find the speculation around it to be pretty distasteful. And frankly, just because the Internet likes to drama farm doesn't mean we're willing to engage in it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think this is also something that or we want to emphasize is that we do a lot more than what happens on stream, right? So we have a content creator pr uh, program that is a collaboration with Twitch and we really value the content creator's pr uh, privacy. And so, you know, just to give you all a simple example, like if my brother or if anyone, let's say, uh, you know, asks me for a referral, right? So if someone like asks me, like, even though I have a personal relationship with them, if they ask me for a referral, let's say they've got like a really, you know, nasty ingrown hair or they have trouble with erectile dysfunction or whatever. Um, I may, we may sometimes make referrals for creators. And just because we're making those referrals doesn't mean that we're going to advertise that, right? So if creators reach out to us um, and need mental health support, if it's not clinical in nature, then our creator coaching program may be appropriate. But even in the event that we do refer people out, that's not something that we feel is okay to like share with people, right? If someone comes to me and is like, hey, I, I have this kind of problem, even though I have no doctor-patient relationship with that person, I'm not going to like advertise that, right? If a friend of mine comes to me, I'm not going to post about it in chat. I think that's just bad form. Um, so just keep that in mind. Anyway. Anyway, today is about thanking you guys and having a little bit of fun. Um, so let's get to it. Let's get to it. Okay. So I think what we're going to be doing today is taking a look at some posts. Um, so let's figure this out. Okay. <laughs> the first one's a doozy. Can you all hear us okay, by the way? Um, okay. Let's take a look. Let me figure this out. Can you all see this? Okay. 
Do you want to? I'll, I'll, I'll start this one. So I'll read it and you can respond. Okay. So my boyfriend called a Twitch streamer his queen. Hold on a second. Uh, I moved the overlay. Oh, no. There. <laughs> Fixed. Thanks, Ryan. Let me lock these. I have to lock them. Okay. All right. So my boyfriend called a Twitch streamer his queen. Um, I don't know what to th what to do. He says he thought it was funny. I don't think it's funny at all. <laughs> so what should you do when your boyfriend calls a Twitch streamer his queen? I call you my queen all the time. Oh, well, that's delightful. <laughs> um, but something tells me that said boyfriend is not dating that Twitch streamer. Ah. Uh, what do you something. think? Um, I mean, I think context matters a lot. If I was... <laughs> This is hilarious. Set up a Twitch, start streaming, see how he likes it when girls start simping over you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it really, it's, the context really matters. It would, it would really disturb me if you started calling other streamers your queen, mainly because you don't talk like that. Um, are there any particular streamers that it would disturb you more if I started calling them my queen? Yes. Like who? <laughs> um, I mean, I have nothing against, like, I, I really enjoy the relationships we have in the creator community. But if you were to, like, start calling hot tub streamers your queen, I don't. Specifically female hot tub streamers or male hot tub streamers? Okay. I would actually expect you to call male hot tub streamers your queen. That sounds like something you would do. S fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but practically, I mean, what do you think? What do you think this person should do? I mean, so boyfriend is calling a Twitch streamer his queen. I mean, I think if she's worried about like parasocial stuff, or if she thinks that, um, you know, he's like overly attached to one particular streamer, I think they should talk about it. Because I mean, if even if it is funny, if and that's like a culture that she doesn't understand, I think it's a good way to bridge that kind of divide um and if there's actually a problem there it's probably good to figure it out early yeah i mean i, I think so this is where you know frankly kruthi and i are a little bit dated when it comes to this stuff like I, I don't know exactly what it means if someone calls a twitch streamer their queen like you know so I, I think this is the kind of thing where it seems like these kinds of things are evolving right like societally so this is where i I think y'all are going to get this theme a lot today, hopefully, which is, I think <laughs> communication is really important. Yeah. So oftentimes, you know, when one person says something, they mean one thing and then like the other person kind of interprets it a different way. Um, and that's just because we all, you know, have our own set of experiences, background context that allows us to interpret things. Um, and so I, I would just, you know, if you're concerned about it, like share that, share that concern with him. So, because this could be, it could be like a meme, right? Like we just don't know, like whether it's like a parasocial relationship, whether the, your, your boyfriend is memeing, like what does it actually mean? And I think especially as like relationships are evolving, as terminology is evolving, it's really important to try to get on the same page with your partner about like, what does this stuff mean? You know, what, how do you perceive this person? Um, you know, do you have some kind of feeling? Like, I, I don't know, just have a conversation about it. I think that the thing that um, worries me a little bit about this is like, I don't think it's funny at all. And I think you have to have a sense of humor about stuff like this. I don't think you can come in like a tacky or that there's like only one right way about it. Well, I mean, I'd, I'd kind of... Attack? No, I mean, I, I'd kind of disagree there because I think that it is okay to actually... Like, if you don't think something is funny, right? Like, it's that's okay. Like, let's say I'm dating someone and, you know, they make a comment that is... Yeah, but don't you think that's going to put him on the defense if you just come in hot and say, like, I don't think that's funny at all? Yeah, I mean, I think it could put them on the defensive, but that's also where, like, I, I think that avoiding putting your partner on the defensive is not necessarily the standard of communication. Ideally, you don't want to, but like if they do something or say something that's out of line and you want to hold them accountable, like sometimes, you know, because I think sometimes in communication, we try overly hard to not hurt someone's feelings. Like 
so I'll see posts, right? People mm-hmm. will say like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. how do I break up with someone without hurting their feelings? And it's like, I don't, you can't. I don't think that's what this is though. Anyway. I mean, so I think the key thing here is that if one person thinks it's funny and the other person doesn't think it's funny, like y'all should talk about it, right? What's, yeah. what's humorous about it and what isn't? Yeah. Um, help me understand the joke, right? So I think this is the other thing where if you're in a situation where someone says something that's, that you don't think is funny and they say it's a joke, you can ask them to explain it to you, right? And like this is where oftentimes if people say things that are out of line. Explaining the joke will definitely not be funny. <laughs> yeah, it won't be funny, but this is where if there are like subsurface toxic attitudes, I think asking people to articulate why they think it's funny is, is a good way to yeah. kind of, you know, point out. Point that out to them. But anyway, so it sounds like I I think this person should have a conversation at the end of the day. Like, what does the term mean? What do you think is funny? What do you think about that? I think, um, I agree. I would just say, try to avoid, like, try to bridge it. Don't put him on the defense about it. I think you're going to get a more genuine answer and more insight that way. Cool. Cool. Next. Okay. I'm going to go close the door real quick why don't you read this one oh nice okay my uh, female 29 year old boyfriend 35 doesn't believe in marriage and it's causing me to try to lie to myself and convince myself marriage is bullshit anyway basically the title always pictured myself getting married and it's always something i wanted in life i'm not really sure why perhaps feeling like someone loves me enough to make me their wife or maybe the big celebration of a wedding anyway my current partner who i'm very in love with does not want to get married. Not to me, not to anyone. I'm actually his first girlfriend, and we started dating about two years ago, so he has been wary of romantic relationships his whole life. It was a major personal step for him to enter a relationship with another person. Unfortunately, I wasn't aware how he felt about marriage until a year in the relationship. I remember him stating marriage is something he would do while we were in the talking phase, but he claims he doesn't remember saying this and doesn't know why he would say it. We almost broke up because of these differences, but decided we still want to be with each other. I love him and want to be with him, and it feels silly to leave this relationship to find someone new, just so I can experience being married. I'm financially independent, and I don't need marriage, and I'm not religious either, but I feel like this is going to be hard to let go of. I also feel feel weird changing my beliefs for someone, but then I ask myself, why does it matter so much that we marry if we love each other? I just can't tell if marriage really doesn't matter or mean anything or if I'm trying to lie to myself to avoid the pain of a breakup side note there's no trust issues at play here on my end at least I saw an interesting uh, someone in chat was kind of mentioning so it seems like this this person had found their first girlfriend at the age of 33 uh, yeah 33 right and uh, so don't give up hope chat everyone moves at their own pace right yep so what do you think about this, this situation? Um, you know, if this person was my friend, I'd be pretty concerned for her because I think it does, I, I think there are issues here. I think there is stuff that he is afraid of. Um, it sounds like they have come to some sort of harmony around what being together means but I don't know what being married means to him and why being married is like mutually exclusive with being together. Um, something about that doesn't sit well with me. What doesn't sit well with you? Well, because, you know, they're not like 21, 23, where like, you know, her boyfriend is 35, I think. He probably has friends that have been married. Like, I don't think this is like a naive kind of decision. I'm never going to get married. I think this is like a real stance. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of hearing that based on their ages, you're sort of thinking like, so early on, like if I'm 23 and I don't want to get married, like I still have stuff to sort out, right? Like internally. Yeah. And you can kind of so change your mind about that. Without, yeah. So yeah. people are still like exploring stuff isn't really set right. in stone. But by the time you get to like 35, like you should sort of have it figured out, kind of. Well, this this seems like a strong belief about his life that isn't going to change. Yeah, I, I think this once again is where um, 
it seems like marriage means s- different stuff to right. the two people. Right. And so I think like any conversation about getting married is, you know, you have to talk about what it means to each of you to get married. What and does this, it mean for you? Um, well, let me just think about that. I don't know. I don't know that it meant, I just, it just felt right. It felt like what, what our relationship was, like the direction that it was going. Like, you know, when you have like a puzzle piece, you've got like a puzzle and there's just one piece left mm-hmm. and then like you stick it in and it's like, it's like complete and mm-hmm. it's done and it's finished. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh yeah, like that's like, that's what is supposed to happen. There's like, there was like this sense that that's just what's supposed to happen. You know, like that's just what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to get married. Like, and not like supposed to in some, it just felt right to get married. I mean, I think we talked about that, right? It's because we were dating for years we were. before we got married. And it's like, okay, like now it's time. It feels like it's time. And I don't know that we ever, yeah, I, I don't know. It just felt right. Yeah. I mean, we never had that conversation around like what marriage means to you. To yeah. me. <laughs> no, but I mean, <laughs> I think, we, are, I, just I think we, we talked about it, right? <laughs> so we talked about, so there's, uh, so Kruthi and I but were both raised in the Hindu tradition and there's this, there's this like ritual that you go through, which sort of binds you together for seven lifetimes. Yep. And so when you get married, you like walk around the fire a certain number of times and, you know, pyrotechnics because nothing makes a wedding like pyrotechnics. Nothing. Um, and so we, you know, so I, I sometimes wonder about things like that. Like, so I, I don't know if, you know, we're, we're being shackled together for seven years. And I also wonder about the escalation, right? So if, if you get married in this year, in this lifetime, and you're supposed to be, that binds you together for seven lifetimes. But then like, what happens if you get married on second lifetime? Right. Now we just, now plus it's like, seven you, plus you, seven plus yeah, seven. like, are yeah. you stacking them up? We are. And, and so, you know, I, I suppose that's very romantic that we've, but ha, you know, I don't know how, was this the last one? Have we renewed our contract? Or like, have we renewed the lease for seven more years? We have. Or, or are we just re-renewing and stacking on? I don't know. Who knows? It's unclear. But it just felt right. Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly wasn't going to marry anyone else. Damn straight. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, kind of going back to this. I mean, I think that this is where, like, so, so Kruthi is kind of saying, you know, if this person was 23, it would be a little bit different. Whereas like, I, you know, I'd encourage you to almost think about this person as being early in the phase of relationship experience, right? Yeah. So this person, uh, the, the, the woman in the relationship was saying like, you're his first girlfriend. So like, you know, he may not be ready for marriage, even though the person started dating at, at 33 and you should sort of have your life figured out maybe theoretically by 35. I think I'm still figuring it out. Um, this is the kind of thing where like, you know, so your boyfriend may have not thought about it too much. Right. So I think a conversation about what marriage means to you, what it means to him, why it's important to you, why he's so against it. And this is also where like compromise is also important. Like there, there are things in a relationship that even if you don't want something a particular way and they want it a a certain way or like vice versa. Right. Sometimes I think it's okay to make, or it's important to make sacrifices for the sake of your relationship. I think nowadays I see an increasing trend on the internet, which is like, you're allowed to want whatever you want, which I totally agree with. But then also like if people are not willing to accept you for who you are, then, you know, like you should sort of, people should just accept you at face value and like not ask you to change at all. But I think in terms of, you know, relationships, especially long-term relationships, change and compromise is a big part of it, right? Because a year later, you're not going to be the same person. You're going to be a different person. Um, that's what I'd say. Have a conversation about it and figure out what what about marriage are, is your boyfriend reluctant about? Like, what's his hesitation? What does it mean to him? Why doesn't he want to do it? And similarly, share your perspective about why it's important to you. Even if it, you know, we're sort of hearing that financial reasons don't really matter. It's not like really a religious thing. It's just you're allowed to grow up in, in a particular environment and just want to be married, right? Like you're allowed to want that. And, and have it be a valuable part of your life and one of your goals. It's totally fine. Yeah. But I feel like the most practical thing they can do is define what it means to be together, define what it means to be married, and try mm-hmm. to look for discrepancies. So, like, you should do it, your boyfriend should do it, 
and y'all should like exchange and talk about it. That might be the most like, or I don't know about the most, but I, f I feel like that would be a good exercise to go through to like get an actual, like a non-defensive conversation going. Okay, next up. Should I wish her a happy Valentine's Day? I started seeing this girl recently. We're not dating, but we went on a date last week and are going on our second this week. We, we text just about every day. Would it be a little much to wish her a happy Valentine's Day? I mean, it's not like Christmas or Easter. I just don't go around mm -hmm. wishing everyone a happy Valentine's Day. But I also want to reinforce that I'm not looking for a friendship with her. Not sure. Any advice? This is so cute. What do you think? So you've been on, so the scenario is you've been on one date, you know, you're not like yeah. technically dating and it sounds like you've got a second date this week. You text every day, wish her happy Valentine's day. Yay. Nay. I think so. Just, I mean, yeah. Help me understand your reasoning. I mean, he wants to, it sounds like he wants to, if he didn't want to, then he wouldn't be writing this post. I think, but if he wants to, I, I, I think generally when it comes to communication, letting your guard down a little bit is a good thing. So I, I don't know if it, it should be happy Valentine's day and that's it. I think maybe some personality around it would be nice, but like what? I don't know. Oh, let me, let me, let me think for a second. Yeah. I was gonna say. What do you think you should do? So I was actually thinking that you should just text Happy Valentine's Day, right? Because here you are thinking about like, oh my God, what does it mean if I send it or if I don't send it? Like, is it going to be coming on too strong or coming on too... So I would say just send Happy Valentine's If you feel like wishing her a Happy Valentine's Day, you can say, hey, Happy Valentine's Day. Hope you're... Okay, but you are colossally bad at texting. You are like, you are such well, hold a on. bad texter. Hold on, hold on. I'm not done yet. I okay. think you may discover why. <laughs> why you're such a bad texter? Because yeah. then here's the thing, right? So here you are in your head, anxious about should I send it or not send Getting it. Getting my money's worth this stream. And and this is where once you send it, then the ball's in her court, right? And then she has to figure out what does it mean? Is it too much? Am I too into it? Is he too into me? Like, is this too much? Is this too little? How should I respond? That's right? the fun so just, part, yeah. So just get it out of your head. And if you want to say happy Valentine's Day, and if you want to, you can even add a little bit Hey, I know we've only been on one date, but Valentine's Day is here, and I hope you're having a good day. Happy Valentine's Day. You can also acknowledge that y'all have only been on one date if you really want to. But, or you could be a little bit ambiguous, and maybe this is why I'm a bad texter. And then let her so sort bad. of sort out what it means, right? Are you coming on too strong? Y'all with me? <laughs> These are all Oak's text. Where are you? <laughs> Get me chai? Okay. Can you come here? done like <laughs> you are well, a bad texter well these are texts that i'm sending you when we're like in the same house if and I'm, I'm texting you from a different room right so done is like when our kids are asleep i'm letting you know that it is safe to come into the bedroom lest you wake them up okay i think you should text happy valentine's day with like a couple of emojis or something i don't know just I don't know. But I think you should go for it. I don't think you should not text her. I'm doing it now. You're texting me? Happy Valentine's Day? <laughs> Man, the emojis. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Love you with emojis. I don't think I've ever gotten an emoji Done. from... <laughs> Texting leveled up, chat. Right, now I'm going to text you back done <laughs> <laughs> okay see i i how is that was that a better text oh, learning better. communication learning, chat so good learning learning right you gotta level up there were there were double heart emojis actually it's it's easier i think i may just use the google suggested emojis there you go it's great let autocorrect finish your text <laughs> Yeah, but at the end of the day, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of, you know, being authentic with people. Like, you want to respect their boundaries, right? So, like, once you're authentic, if they express to you some concern, don't, like, keep hammering them. Yeah. Right? 
So like if you text Happy Valentine's Day and they don't respond, don't be like, aren't you going to text me back? Like what? So I think it's okay to acknowledge a little bit, right? Where you could say, hey, I know we've been on one date. Now we're in the awkward position of like, do we text each other Happy Valentine's Day? Well, I just hope you're having a good day. Happy Valentine's Day. You're frowning. Is this a mistake? No, I, I agree that you should not badger her for not responding. I'm yeah. realizing that I badger you for responding. <laughs> okay, then. Well, I think a little bit of badgering is okay. 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 Badgering is fun. Badgering is fun. Yeah. I mean, I think that's just like, you know, Yeah. I don't need a whole lot of emotional support through text, and, and maybe you do, which is totally fine. <laughs> I don't think that's what's happening. <laughs> okay, whatever. Band. GG okay. chat. All right. Maybe we should keep track of Dr. K's performance here today. <laughs> you guys think I'm in the hole or out of the hole? Like, let's say here's the hole. Like, are we in or out? No. Right? Can you I, please you... rephrase this? <laughs> no, I meant like digging yourself a hole. Uh, no, yeah, uh-huh. Okay. No. I know, uh, I know. Okay, so <laughs> we just dug ourselves into the hole a little bit more. <laughs> Y'all let me know. Okay, let's just, let's go on. Don't clip it, chat. Just move on. Just Next move question. On. Next question. Go. Is it normal to develop a crush on almost every single girl you talk to? I legitimately start to develop a crush on every single girl that I talk to because I was homeschooled for my entire life until college. Is this normal? Oh. We were thinking about homeschooling, and now I'm swayed. What do you think? I mean, normal is, um, I think, you know, your your life experience is not typical, right? Most people are not homeschooled. So I think you should forget about whether or not it's normal and more of like, if it's debilitating for him to be able to approach a girl or to like, have normal relationships. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, he, he... I think you can safely say he's not normal in that kind of sense because he was homeschooled. Like, his social skills are going to be a little atypical. Okay. That sounds kind of brutal. <laughs> I mean, I think... I, I just hate the well, word normal. You want me to can take a stab it? at it? Yeah, you can. Okay. I just don't like the word normal, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So here's, okay, here's my take on this, okay? So if you're 19 years old, you're homeschooled, you go to college, and you haven't really, like, interacted with a whole lot of people that you're sexually attracted to, um, whether it's men, women, whatever. I think, oddly enough, it is actually completely normal to have this kind of reaction. And the good news is that I would guess that it won't continue forever. So you're not like doomed to being attracted or crushing on every single girl that you meet for the rest of your life. So let's just think about like what's going on here, okay? So normally we tend to go through puberty around, like we start puberty around 12, 13. And so puberty is like a process, right? So there's like a large hormonal change. There are all kinds of like physiologic changes, psychological changes, neuroscience changes that go on in puberty. And generally speaking, let's just talk about hormones, right? So this isn't scientifically going to be technically correct. Not medical advice, by the way. Um, yeah, but just like, let's just think about, so like we have hormonal fluctuations throughout puberty, right? So we're not, you know, the process of being a raging hormonal teenager doesn't happen overnight. And generally speaking, we, we have all these kinds of interesting parts of our brain that develop, like, so we become sexually, like more uh, attracted to things, people, um, you know, we become uh, more lustful right? Uh, there's like boosts to testosterone and, and progesterone, estrogen, all these kinds of hormones. And so that's a gradual process. So if you think a little bit about like what high school is like for the average teenager, uh, maybe famous last words here, but you're not like constantly horny, but there's like your, your body's like growing, right? So your body's developing and adapting. And that development and adaptation is happening with like regular interaction with, um, uh, people that you're sexually attracted to. So your body is sort of figuring out, okay, now we're becoming like more sexually mature. We're becoming more, um, and as a result, we're like starting to develop feelings for people. So even if you think about the concept of a crush, 
like what is a crush, right? It's like a strangely physiologic, non-psychological, like nuanced thing, right? You meet someone and then you start crushing on them and it's like your body is like thinking about them all the time and then like you don't really know what's going on, right? So I think it's it's kind of in a sense even normal because it, it, throughout teenage years, if we're exposed to people that we're attracted to, we learn how to like moderate those feelings. We learn how to kind of calm down. Our body also kind of figures out, oh, hey, like, okay, we're doing this thing again. And then your crush kind of disappears after a little while, right? Because it's like, it's sort of a very hormonal physiologic sort of thing. And so if you've missed that window of let's say 13 to 19 of like crushing on people gradually, Right? So you get your first crush when you're 13, you're like, what the hell is going on? And then like it kind of goes away as your hormones are adapting and changing. Then you get your next crush when you're 14, you're like, what the hell is going on? And by the time you get to like 15, 16, remember your, your sexual maturation is continuing to increase, right? So like the psychological ability to deal with crushes is sort of growing as your sexual maturity is increasing. If you've been homeschooled, suddenly you're a fully developed, sexually mature 19-year-old. And then you're getting exposed to like, like crushing stimuli for the first time. And as you get exposed to that stuff, like you, your body just hasn't learned how to handle it yet. So I think it's, it's not actually that unusual. Like I wouldn't be surprised that this mm -hmm. person is, is in this, in this, is in this situation. I also would not be worried about it. So you can always seek professional help if you want to, and you're worried, right? That's always a good idea. But at the end of the day, you know, I think it sort of makes sense that if you think about the process of sexual maturation and kind of like interaction with people that you're attracted to, that creates a lot of like slowly building crushes that you kind of manage and stuff. And this is what's going on now is that you've been sort of homeschooled for, you know, six years, seven years during that process. And now you're sort of getting like your, your mind, your physiology is getting exposed to these kinds of stimuli. So it can be really overwhelming. So I, I would say don't worry too much about it. I'm just mentally trying to police my usage of the word exposed during this entire thing. But, um, you know, I, I think it's like it can be normal because normally that process is, stre is stretched out over like six years, let's say. And so if that process, that six-year process is being compressed to one year, it's going to feel particularly overwhelming. And over time, I think you'll you'll learn because that's what the body does. Like the body catches up, right? Yep. I... <laughs> I think this person is going to be just fine and it'll kind of pass. But the good thing is that it's like every single girl and it's not an obsessive thing for like a few girls. So friendly little crushes are fine. Okay. Next up. Your turn. Should I ask for my ring back? My girlfriend recently dumped me completely out of the blue to be with somebody else and told me that was the reason why. Come, recently dumped me completely out of the blue to be with someone else. Only that was okay. Because okay, so the person got dumped because she was girlfriend. With somebody okay. else. Yeah. She wore the expensive ring I bought her for Christmas that she had been wanting to break the news to me. She had been talking to this person behind my back while we dated and set it up so she could leave me to go be with them. I, am I an asshole if I ask for the ring back? Um, I'm in a financially tight situation. I don't even know why she would want to keep it if it if if I was that meaningless to her. What do you think? I mean, it's not an engagement ring. I I think if he wants it back, he can ask for it back. I wouldn't I wouldn't get vicious if she says no, but I bought her for Christmas. So he just bought it for her like a couple months ago. And she's wearing it to break up the I don't know. I don't I just I guess I don't like this girl. <laughs> so if he wants his ring back, that's fine. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, I'm inclined to agree. So I think like if you got a piece of jewelry, especially during a part where the relationship was not like emotionally, um, honest for lack of a better term. Right. Right. So you sort of, there was something going on with your partner that was, you were not aware of where she wasn't emotionally invested in the relationship. And so the gift was given under the premise of being in an emotionally invested relationship. So I think it's completely reasonable to ask for it back and say like, hey, you know, I'd really appreciate it. The language I would use is, hey, um, you know, in light of like what you've told me about 
like you've been talking to this person for a while and maybe have been like emotionally kind of like leaving this relationship for some time. I think it's, I'd really like my ring back. And in light of what you've told me recently, like, I, I don't really think if I had known, if you had been honest with me, I would have ever given it to you. Mm-hmm. Um, if I knew how you felt, which I'm totally, you know, it's fine that you felt that way. I just wish I, I would have known. And I kind of feel like that gift was given under inappropriate pretenses. The other thing to remember is that I think it's okay to ask for it back by all means, but also respect her boundary, right? Because at the end right. of the day, like it's a gift. So it's hers now. And even if it was, you didn't really understand what was going on, like that's the kind of thing where like, you know, if she decides to keep it, she decides to keep it. If you, if you get it back, please God, just return it. Don't dwell on it. Why? Like, I don't know. I don't feel like sometimes people get their things back from a relationship and then they like have the box of the relationship and then they dwell on the relationship and... I wouldn't want it be, to become an object of dwelling, I guess. By the way, Andy's in chat. Andy um, Milanakis. Hey, Andy. Hey. Hope you're doing well, man. We'll, we'll find out. Maybe we should ask Andy what he thinks about. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, Andy? Ring or no ring? Um, other things, I'd, I'd be super curious what Andy thinks about Tether and things like that, right? Because he's a, he's a crypto chad. But... You know, who, who here on, on Twitch talks about crypto? Are they like crypto experts? Stocky? Stock guy? Yeah, I think a, a couple of people um, talk about crypto, but Andy's saying he talks about NFTs more than crypto. Andy talks about NF- NFTs That's or stock guy? Saying, uh, I don't about. know about stock guy, but Andy's saying he's an NFT person. Okay. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Something I understand even less than crypto. I asked our accounting people what to do about crypto and they're like really scared about it because you can have, there was a post on our subreddit for somebody who wanted to donate in Ethereum. And the problem with that is it can be an asset that like appreciates wildly and then you're liable for taxes on that asset. And then if it tanks, then anyway, it's a whole complicated thing. Okay. Yeah, I'm his wife. All right. Should we keep going? Yeah. So ask for the ring back, right? Chat, do you all agree? Ask, ask don't for the ring. push. Return yeah. it if you get it. I don't know about return, but it sounds, it sounds wise. I mean, he's asking it for it back because he's in a financially tough situation. What is he going to sure. do with the ring? Give it to somebody else? Give it to someone who fucking deserves it. Like you? <laughs> no. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, if the ring was bought as a symbol of love and affection, give you know, honor the purpose of the ring. But I, I'm with you. I'm not if saying that. If you were to ever recycle jewelry on me, I don't, I don't know what I would do with that. If I were to ever. Okay, stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> We've been together too long. Yeah. Yeah. No okay. Recycling going on. Can we do a shorter one? No, no, no. We ha- I'll read this one. Okay. This one this is, sounds, looks good, dude. Okay. Girl I was talking to sent me this. Help me decode this message. This is great. Yeah. It's a sleuthing. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. sleuth. So I've been talking to this girl from Tinder for about two weeks now. We've hung out a good portion of the two weeks. Like gone drinking, playing pool, movies cuddle at her place. She even went to Disneyland this past weekend and got me a hat from there out of the blue. Yesterday we were supposed to go go-karting for Valentine's and dinner right after. She sends me this message about six hours before we're supposed to go on our date from her. Hey, sorry, I I haven't been super talkative this last day and today. I just took my me day and have been thinking about what I want and everything. And I don't think I'm ready for a committed relationship. I still have a lot of stuff to work through, obviously, and don't want to drag someone through that. All in all, I just really don't want to hurt you by leading you on or you thinking I'm using you, etc. Anyways, here's me over communicating again. I just want you to know because I respect you and don't want my intentions to be unclear. That being said, when I said yes to being your Valentine, I meant it. So if you still want to go out as friends, we definitely can. But I'd completely understand if you weren't comfortable with it. I care about your feelings, so I just want you to be comfortable. I also want to make it very clear that it isn't you. I cut off all dating with everyone, so please don't internalize internalize it and think, and, and think I think lowly of you or anything like that. End. 
So we've been very open about our shortcomings and the most we've ever done is just kiss, not even make out. I'm just now recently getting in the dating scene and I just want to know if this text message is actually, uh, I screwed up the situation or not. What do you think, Kuti? I think she should have just said happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Ironically. <laughs> um, I'm kidding. I... I don't know. I, I, I feel like this is um, not a well-edited text. Um, but also, yeah, this is not... This is not My like, texts are very well-edited. <laughs> edited down to one word. So edited. Um, I think... Okay, so his question is really... Sorry, this thing is like in my face. I can't see. Um, <laughs> That's what she said. I knew this was going to be a problem from the beginning. You, you, the record, stepped, no, you stepped I into that one. I knew this was in the hole, let's just say. <laughs> and I just want to know if this text message is actually a fucked up situation or not. Yeah, I think I think it's a bit of a messy situation. That's my short answer. Yes. I mean, you're supposed to help the dude decode the message. Okay, let's decode it. Um, she's not ready for a relationship. I think she probably um, overthinks. She has like an overthinking thing. Um, I think she's trying to be really clear that like, you know, it's me, not you. What is she saying though? I don't know. Okay. Here's what I think she's saying. I think she's saying that she doesn't she's... want the relationship. There you go. She right? doesn't, I mean, she, she wants to be friends, but she doesn't want to be his Valentine. So she'll hang out with him. No, she says she is his Valentine, but I think that's like, kind of like a consolation prize. No, no, no. I mean, I think it's sort of like, you know, when you're in school and you're like in the third grade and you like pass out Valentines, it's like, will you be my Valentine? Like, I, I think this is where there's confusion over what it means to be a Valentine. And once again, Valentine's Day, you've been going on dates for what it sounds like two weeks, right? And so up looms Valentine's Day, which suddenly adds an artificial so amount pressure. Of, of seriousness to a relationship. Yeah. yeah. It's like, well, like the three stages of relationship are dating. <laughs> Valentine's Day. Valentine. Will you be my Valentine? Engaged in marriage, right? <laughs> So I, I think what I would really interpret from this is that this girl enjoys your company, but she sees this relationship as platonic. And that's where like, it can be painful, but on the, on the one hand, like I think it's really actually mature of her to send this, right? So she's not, she wants to make it clear that while y'all are kind of like having fun, and I'm also getting lots of mixed signals here, because there is cuddles and y'all are kissing and she's getting you gifts and stuff. So I think this is the kind of thing where there's mixed signals. So it's kind of ambiguous. And so what she's doing is she's now drawing a firm line. And she says, hey, this is like where my line is. Like, I'm not interested in a relationship. I'm not looking for, I'm not looking to date. Um, I said yes to being your Valentine. I, I thought that that meant something romantic. But it also seems like she's saying, I don't want tonight my intentions to be unclear. Yeah. If you want to go out tonight as friends, we definitely can. Um, I care about your feelings, which I agree with. It does sound like she cares about his feelings, right? So she's sort of saying, hey, I wasn't sure exactly how I felt. But that's the other thing to remember, right? Is like when you start talking to someone, they may not have everything internally figured out. Like we're not like, you know, 100% mapped about what we want. I see a lot of questions in chat like, well, then why did she kiss him? Why? I feel like she is, um, she's, trying to give consolation prizes like i'll kiss you i'm not gonna make out with you i'll go hmm. be your valentine as a friend but i'm not gonna have a relationship with you and she's trying to say that she doesn't want to lead him on and i think she is she's not doing a great job of that but i i can totally empathize with this like not wanting to hurt his feelings so do maybe a little bit more than she wants to out of a sense of preserving his feelings but that's just making it worse yeah, I mean, I think this is the kind of thing where, like, people are asking, why did she kiss him? Well, I think, like I was saying, because people aren't monolithic, right? Yeah. So, so if I, you think I about... I think she also gets to kiss him and then make up her mind that, oh, didn't like that, don't want to do that again. Sure, right? That's why we progress. It kind of reminds me, so when my... I was explaining to my mom many years ago that Kruthi and I were dating. Oh, yeah? 
yeah, yeah. Oh, you've heard of this story. Don't, okay. don't be shocked. It's okay. okay. All right. And so she was like, dating? Like, what does that mean? Does that mean you're going to get married? <laughs> and I was like, no, not necessarily. I mean, we may. She's like, I'm confused. Like, what's the point of dating if you're not going to get married? And so like, you know, remember that in a relationship, just because you take one step forward doesn't mean that you're, you know, going the whole marathon, right? And like people are allowed to sort of figure things out, change their mind, stuff like that. Um, I do think also remember that if you're, let's say I say, oh, I want to like start eating healthier. And then it's like, I'm going to have a salad for lunch and then like pizza for dinner. And people are like, well, why did you have the salad or why did you have the pizza if you were going to eat healthier? And like, you're sending like me mixed signals about, are you getting healthy? You're not getting healthy. It's because we're not monolithic, right? So she may have wanted to try it. She may have, she may have mixed feelings. And if we kind of think about it, like if we actually pay attention to what she said, um, you yeah, know, I cut nice. off all dating with everyone. So she may still have some degree of romantic feelings, but internally has realized that like she needs to work on herself first before she is ready for a relationship, which I think is actually a pretty mature perspective. Now for people sort of saying, you know, is he, is she leading him on? Like there may have been some degree of that over the course of the last two weeks, right? Cause there are mixed signals. But I think actually this, this text is actually very clearly saying like, I'm not trying to lead you on. I'm not interested in a relationship. Here's my line. And then you can sort of decide whether you want to engage with that or not. Last thing that I'd say is that, you know, if you're into someone, if you have romantic feelings for someone um, and they send you a message like this, I'd be really, really careful about continuing to engage with the person because it's hard to move from yeah. romance to like friendship. Not saying it's impossible. I suppose a lot of people do it. But then like what sort of happens is, is you kind of like, if, if you have romantic intentions in the relationship and she has platonic intentions in the relationship, like I think that's going to end up probably bad. But there are, you know, I've heard stories of, you know, people who sort of don't give up and they realize that they're in love and like any rom-com, you know, where things start out platonic and then you realize, or episode of South Park, which I was watching recently, which is hilarious. This is an episode of South Park. Okay. I didn't know you still watched South Park. I recently started again. Okay. Um, so I, I'd say, you know, if you have romantic feelings towards this person, I'd kind of consider... Wait, hold on. We had people over for the Super Bowl, and then you went off and watched South Park? No, no, I didn't watch South Park yesterday. Okay. <laughs> I watched a Dota. It's like, oh, that's where you went. <laughs> Dude, I don't know about y'all. So, can like, I cannot... Can y'all watch? <gasps> After watching esports, I can't watch, like, real sports anymore. Like, literally the Super Bowl... The, 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 the Super Bowl is, is literally 60 minutes of actual competition right it's four quarters at 15 minutes a piece and the thing lasts for four hours there's like so many damn commercials so many damn pauses like i, I just can't do it anymore like i, I it blows it kind of feels like you know back when we before we had like on-demand streaming services yeah yeah and like now if you go back and you watch like tv it's atrocious Am I the only one? No, you're not. Okay. Because I like football. I think it's fun. Like going to a game, I think is a little bit different because there's a bunch of like social interaction and stuff like that going right. on. But and you can just watch Dota at the game. Yeah. I haven't <laughs> gone that far, but boy, that sounds fantastic. It's totally what you would do. All right. Right. Okay. Decoded. Decoded. Moving on. Mm -hmm. People are asking if I'm drinking from a pitcher. I am drinking from a pitcher. I'm out of cups. Oh, you are. It's, it's just water, though. It's not like... I thought you meant, like, metaphorically. Mm -mm. Um, okay, kind of terrified of making a move. Hey, guys. So straight to the... You want to read this one? Sure. Hey, guys. So straight to the point. I am an almost 29-year-old man who has never dated anyone nor been in a relationship. Reasons include never having had mutual attraction with anyone, always been one-sided, either on my part or the other person's part, me being unattractive. It's an attractive, very short dude, which essentially means unattractive. Oh, I don't agree with that. And having been single for so long that I honestly can't even see myself in a relationship. I don't know what it is like being in a relationship, so the thought of being in one is very foreign and a bit scary, TBH. We fear the unknown. This is how I explain it to myself. So now for the situation. I met someone at work known her for only a single day, who comes across as a genuinely nice person who is also very attractive. 
I would normally not even hesitate to write her off because she is too attractive and I am inadequate, but I've been regretting not possibly having made a move so many times now that I'm willing to go against my fears and give it a shot. I have oftentimes read that going for coworkers is a very bad idea, which I absolutely agree with, but the lady seems to be worth the risk that I'm considering it. So I am asking for advice. Should I go for it? Has anyone here been in a similar situation? And if yes, how did you proceed? And just overall, share your opinion in general. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what do you think, Ruthie? <laughs> I always say go for it. I always say give it a shot. I think I think so much of this is in his head for like how attractive or inadequate or whatever he is. But if he finds her attractive and sounds like she's engaging with him, I don't it, It'd be nice to throw up like a little test balloon without being like, "Look, I find you attractive. I'm too short or whatever." Like, I don't I think just a test balloon would be nice. So like test balloon means flirting? Oh, uh, like get a coffee or something. I don't, well, like, I don't know what the work situation is here. Does it say? No, just something that. at work? He's, he's, he's known her, let's, <laughs> known her for a single day. Oh, oh, Met okay. someone at work. Okay, yeah, he's got. Very attractive. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Yeah, foster the relationship a little. So, yeah, I, I, so generally speaking, I'm for going for it, right? So I think that, just go for it. Um, After a single day? What does it mean? I said go generally speaking. We're going to okay, get to this right, in a second. All right, all right. So generally Here speaking, like, in terms of, of, like, you know, if you want to wish her a happy Valentine's Day, just, like, if that's what you're feeling authentically, just do it, right? And, like, go, go for it and respect the other person's boundaries. That's my general philosophy for, like, how to approach these kinds of situations. What? But. But what? It worked for you. No, no, no. I, I hear a but coming. Uh, so okay. so that, that's, you know, respect people's boundaries, but like be authentic, right? So just be like honest. And if you feel a particular way, let them know. That being said, especially, so here's what I think is going on. First thing is that don't shit where you eat, right? So like don't, don't start relationships in I places. I hate that phrase so much. What should I say? What, you have an alternative? I just, no, go ahead. Okay. So I'd say like at work, like it's kind of weird, right? So if you ask this person out on a date, like, and they say no, you're, you're going to have to continue interacting with them. Like, I think there's like workplace boundaries, right? So we have boundaries around the workplace. And so respect boundaries, be authentic, but respect boundaries. The other thing is that I get the sense that this person is trying to like prove or grow in a particular way to like, they're trying to level up their fear. Does that make sense? Like they're sort of trying to level it. Like, so they're kind of saying like, okay, so I've been afraid to, to ask people out. So in order to level up, like I'm going to find an attractive person, I'm not going to be intimidated by them and I'm going to ask them out. So that makes sense. Like, I think it's a good way to kind of approach things like approach life, stuff like that is like, if you have an internal sense of inadequacy and your internal sense of inadequacy has helped, has kept you back from accomplishing certain things or taking certain risks, you should absolutely try to level up that skill. But I'd be super careful about doing it, first of all, at work, right? Where there could be other kinds of consequences. You could make her feel uncomfortable. It could HR stuff, like whatever. It could make you feel really uncomfortable. Like you just don't know exactly like what's going to happen there because there are complicating factors, right? The other thing is that, you know, like this sentence really bothers me, but the lady seems to be worth the risk. That's just like what, what I'm sort of getting there is that there's a normal calculus, but something about this situation is causing you to like rethink the calculus, right? You don't want to like, if you have an equation of appropriate behavior, it's like, let's say I'm not going to steal, but then there's like, there's like a million dollars and it's like, well, if there's a million dollars, like maybe it's okay to steal. So like figure out what your, you know, what your standard is in life and then kind of like stick to it and be careful about making exceptions because I don't know what part of your body you're thinking with at that point. So I'd say be a little bit careful about, you know, trying to level up in a work situation. And, you, you know, if someone is worth the risk, like that, just something about that doesn't 
sit right with me. Uh, the single day is kind of what's... I mean, I'm, I'm excited for him that he's finally excited and thinks that there could be there after, you know, not having any mutual attraction with anyone. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd say... You know, if you do, if you do want to pursue things in some way, I'd, I'd, I think Ruthie's like right in terms of like test the waters, right? So try to have a conversation first. Like, you know, this is where. Also, I wouldn't recommend that you flirt at work, but like being a little bit flirtatious is the way that you test the waters, right? That's what flirting is. It's like testing is that the what waters. Flirting is. Well, what would you call it? I don't know. I don't flirt at work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one day we are gonna have to do some kind of stream or share what it's like to actually be married and work together. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, so that, that's interesting though, because we, you know, we were in a relationship before we started working together, which I think is like actually better right than the other way around. But I don't know. Maybe We've it's had both. a couple of working relationships too. Like relationships where we are working on something together. Like oh, camp isn't... and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, I mean, I, mm, I, mean, I feel like camp was sort of a dating service. <laughs> okay. Extracurriculars, clubs. I don't know. Anyway, so I would say kind of t- if you're kind of terrified of making a move, like I would not recommend making a move in yeah, this situation. I would, don't do some big gesture. Gentle, gentle. Proceed gently with caution. Yeah. Chat wants me to teach them how to flirt. Okay. What do you think? Go ahead. You want me to flirt with you right now? It's not what I want. It's what chat wants. Well, what do you want? I want you to flirt with me right now. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do it. Easy. Done. Too easy. <sighs> See? Work, work, work. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. You like being flirted with, I don't do. you? <laughs> I do. I do. Because... I don't, I don't invite flirtatious attention because yeah. I'm a married lady. Well, I mean, so. I, I'm super lucky that you don't invite flirtatious attention because if you did, you'd get like so much of it. Yeah, that's why Puerto Rico is fun. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> right? So I think that's, that's a good example. You get a lot of flirtatious attention, friend. You've always gotten flirtatious attention. I don't think so. Oh my God, those nurses. I mean, that's... So hospitals are just a whole different situation. Flirting doesn't count in hospitals. Is that what I'm hearing? No, no, no. I, I, I also am very, very careful about, you know, the kinds of, you know, I started, you know, wearing the ring recently because I was getting. I don't have my ring. <laughs> um, yeah, you were. You were really getting all, quite a lot. So we just have to be careful there, right? So we want to set boundaries. And the ring is one way that you indicate a boundary to other people. Yeah. So, but in terms of flirting, I, I don't know, like, what did you, like, because it was pretty easy, right? Because I was like, oh, do you want me to flirt with you? And you're like, no, I want to chat. It's, it's like, get it's her to It's the look. It's the look. It's the set of the chin. <laughs> the, yeah. And the eyebrow. Eyebrows? Yeah. Accent? What about the flaring of the, the nostrils? accent <laughs> is really just not a good way to go, friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think, you know, in terms of flirting, like, Try to make her laugh. Like, True. You know? Make her feel special. And, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, you all saw what happened there, right? So how would you, how would you just, uh, yeah, just, so this is the kind of thing where, like, whatever, whatever they send your way, like, play with it. Don't argue with them, right? So if she's like, oh, chat wants me to, I don't even remember what I said. It just felt pretty easy. It was easy. Yeah. You're easy. Um, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Right? So that's the kind of thing where you could have responded with, oh, no, you're easy. But that's a little bit aggressive. It's like, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And then she laughs. So guilty, guilty. you got to be careful because, like, in there you can say, oh, you're easy. But you don't want to say that. Like, you're like, yeah, I'm easy. Take advantage of me, please. You know? That's, that's the attitude. You that's don't say that. Attitude. No, it's okay. See, you see? It's good. It's good. It's good. Thank you see you. what I'm saying? Invite. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, you just, like, you don't want to say take advantage of me because that's a little bit forward, right? Like, it's like... Heavy handed, maybe a little bit creepy. It's like, oh, take advantage of me, baby. Like that's, you know what I mean? That's too much. So the attitude, it's about facial expressions, nonverbal communication. Um, Like you don't, you want to sort of say like, yeah, I am easy. Like what are you going to do about it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> the wiggle is good. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so I, I got a I got a really good tip um, many years ago from someone who was doing teaching us how to give speeches. This was back when I was in residency, and so she was saying like you know as you're giving a speech, um, like come up with the first paragraph, and she had us us. Uh, throw and catch balls while we were like delivering the speech. And what happens when you're like tossing a ball back and forth with someone else who's like giving a speech is that there's like movement involved and it kind of like loosens you up. So like a lot of people are really nervous, but like physiologically, if you like move physically while you're sort of practicing to give a speech, it kind of like reduces that tension and makes you feel a lot more natural. So I think a lot of the movement is, is really good. And you don't want to be like, so the whole thing about flirtation is that you don't want to be heavy handed, right? So you don't want to say like, oh, take advantage. The whole point of flirtation is that it's like subsurface communication. Yeah. That's the whole point. Innuendo. So you, yeah. And so then that, that's the kind of thing where it's like with innuendo plus like facial expressions, like you can, you know, a little bit of like loose movement, confidence. You're not tense. You're not like, ha, 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 let me flirt with you, please, milady. Right? So you want to just be chill. Like, and also remember that if you're trying to flirt low expectations for yourself and the other person, right? So the, the goal should be that both of y'all should walk away from the interaction having enjoyed the experience. It's not about trying to get laid right. or it's, trying to get a date or anything like that. It's just like, let's have this brief interaction. And if she's laughing at the end of it, that makes me happy. We both sort of enjoyed that, you know, and then like, you can kind of like walk away if you need to, right? So you don't want to get overly invested. You want to steer clear of stuff like worth the risk. Um, so, so just try to have an engaging, enjoyable interaction with another human being without attaching too much to it. Yeah, I agree with that a lot. Right? Don't don't try to seal a deal or get something yeah. out of it. It's just having fun in the moment. Yeah, it's like, and and so I think that's where being attractive to other people is about you know being enjoyable to spend time. I with. have a question. Yeah. Okay. What. So I know what an Jay's alpha kidding. is. I know what a beta is. What's a sigma? Uh, so chat may be able to answer better, but I think sigma is someone who just has their own plan, like doesn't play the game and plays like their own independent game. Okay. Right. So like in, in the Super Bowl, for example, <clears throat> right. So you have the winners and the losers, and then you have the people over here playing Dota. <coughs> Who are the sigmas? All right, got it. Is that right. is that correct? He knows. That sounds good. I've got my picture. <clears throat> I may go get some tea or something though. Tea sounds nice. You got some? Mm-hmm. What kind? Something easy. Green tea? Sure. You want to handle the next one? Sure. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This one's loaded. Loaded what? chat. Okay, I, I'm going to go. I need to go pee and... Yeah, um, you go do that. I'm just going to hang out with chat. I'm not going to do a subreddit. Okay, okay, go. go okay. <clears throat> you want munchy? I don't want to munch on the microphone. No munching on the microphone? Okay. Yeah. Love you. Love you too. Hi. Happy Valentine's Day, chat. What can I do for you? Oh, thanks. Didn't they do such a good job on this office? They really did great. How is it living with Dr. K? Um, it's amazing. He does, he does so much that I don't really realize until like he's gone. So like he always knows where my phone is. My phone is always charged. He used to keep up with my glasses too, but I, we haven't seen a pair in a while. Um, he's super thoughtful. Like he's always like, I'm going to be out running errands. Do you want anything? Or, um, you know, like if he's going from this room to that room, he's always like multitasking, like, oh, I'll take this to that room with me. Um, I mean, there's like some drawbacks too, because stuff tends to get shifted all over the place but um he's great he's a great dad like his stories are like I like listening to his bedtime stories and his like dinner time stories so the girls are like tell us a story tell us a story and he's trying to eat but I'm like tell us a story <laughs> um he's great really he's very like he's just a 
person who likes taking care of people. Tell us two bad things about Dr. K, please. Um, well, you guys probably know this, but like he definitely burps a lot. And the other bad thing... He, he used to, well, no, that's, I can't think of another one. This is weird. That's all I got. He burps a lot. Um, you've never seen Moist Critical. I'll see a couple of his clips sometimes, but I don't know if that was directed at me or not. Dr. K called himself a loser. So what made Kruthi fall in love with the loser? He wasn't a loser. He wasn't. He was, he was, um, he had really short hair at the time. So like, you know, he just didn't look his best. Um, he also didn't really care about, like, he didn't really know how to dress and stuff like that. Um, so I think he just wasn't, like, put together in that way. But he was also, like, 17, 18. Um, no, 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 no. Sorry. He was, like, 21 when we started dating. Um, he wasn't a loser, I don't think. Oh, my God. When will we see photos of young Dr. K? You know, we didn't have smartphones back then. <laughs> so they're, like, printed out pictures buried in an album somewhere. Wasn't he failing? Yeah, but a lot of people, that doesn't, to me, default make you a loser. But yeah, he had some, he had some academic problems. Did I dress him up? I don't, no, I didn't dress him up. He, he gets most of his uh, fashion advice from his brother and a couple of his friends. And then he, like, kind of finds, like, the jeans that fit him and he just gets in every color. He finds the shirts that he likes and he just gets in every color. Which I think is actually a good way to go. It like really simplifies the decision making. Are you 50 years old? No, I'm not. Um, he should dress better. Okay. Indian accent, please. I can do a little bit, but my accent is not so good. Also, my accent is more like an uncle. Then an auntie. I cannot do an auntie accent. I can do uncle accent. That's all. Do I speak Hindi? I studied Hindi for two years, but um, I'm pretty I'm pretty awful. I don't speak Gujarati very well either. How have you contributed to how he is now? I try not to think about that too much, because um, I don't like the idea of like taking credit for somebody else's life or growth but um I think I think I mean we we very much are who we are because of each other's support and encouragement so I'd say I've contributed but um I I don't want to take credit for all of the amazing things that he's done how can you tell when a girl is interested in more than being friends okay the simplest solution is how much time she gives you if she's giving you a lot of time, she enjoys your company and will want to, I, I think, because I don't give my guy friends that much time. Um, you know, it's like you're more compartmentalized in a person's life. Um, but when you give somebody a lot of time, that's when I think you can signal that um, you could potentially explore taking his relation, that relationship further. Which part of India you belong to ethnicity-wise? We're Gujarati. How did you succeed in education college? <sighs> Success is a weird word um, when it comes to academics. I Personally, I, I went to school to learn. I didn't really care about the grades. I, learned, I went to school to learn and to network and to like develop skills. Um, I think all of... You know, when you're in an academically inclined trajectory, it's really about performance and like the next step. What are my thoughts on polygamy? Um, I've never seen it succeed. Um, I've, I'm sure it works for some people. I just don't know them. 
How do you practice and get better at playful teasing, flirting without creeping people out? I mean, it's a good question. Um, it's hard because, you know, if you're only thinking about like, am I creeping someone out? Am I creeping someone out? It's going to be kind of debilitating in the moment to actually flirt. Um, the best advice I would give you is do it in like very low risk environments. Um, like, you know, if you're out traveling and you're never going to see these people again or um, at a coffee shop or something, I would start with a compliment, um, some sort of compliment that's fairly innocuous, I like shoes, where'd you get them, like that kind of thing and see where that opens up. How do you balance helping a friend, romantic interests, mental health with your own mental health? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I think, I mean, you, it's not your job to balance your mental health with your partner's mental health. I think that is something that you would want to both engage external professionals to help you figure it out individually and then talk about it together. So I would kind of say like you each need to work on yourself and then share progress with each other and what that means for your relationship. Why do you pick the weirdest chatters? I don't know. Sorry. I don't think they're weird. Um, Kruthi, how, hold on. Sorry. Stop scrolling. How big is your biceps? Not that big. Um, do you like seafood? I love seafood. Oh, 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 okay. No, I want to say I love seafood, but Alok and I have learned that we don't actually like seafood. We like fish. Um, this was like a, a realization because we would always get like, you know, the seafood medley and be like, ah, eh, don't like half the stuff in here. We love fish. Okay on the seafood, but I love oysters. Alok's okay on them. What kind of art do you like? Um, I like sculpture a lot. And actually, I got all of this really cool painting. I don't know where it has gone. Um, but I really like art that um, is a little bit playful and a little bit escapist. Like you, you think of a time or a place or a memory, that kind of thing. You love the lamps? I think they did such a good job with the lamps. I agree. Um, where is my doc? I need my doc now that I am having a heart attack. I'm alone on Valentine's day. I don't know, but this is not medical advice. <laughs> so if you're having a heart attack, please see a medical professional, but Alec will be back soon. He's making tea. Um, have I ever struggled with a breakup? Yeah, I have. Um, before Alec and I got together, I went through a really painful breakup. Um, it was really painful. I was also pretty young, um, so I didn't, I'd never been like rejected before. Um, and that was really, really hard. It was very, I didn't feel like myself. I felt like I had, um, lost a lot of like my confidence and like aspects of my personality that I never even thought twice about. I kind of was second guessing. It really, it really threw me for a loop. Um, I was really, I was really hurt. It really hurt my feelings. Um, how does one be in a relationship with a gamer boy who has never had one honest question how does one be in a relationship with a gamer boy who has never had a relationship um okay i have a thing where i think we generally like overanalyze the labeling um and so if you're like i want to be in a relationship i don't know that we're clear always on what that means like what does it mean to you to be in a relationship because i think you can be in a relationship without having the relationship label 
And that kind of makes it easier. And then once you get, you know, far enough along in that, you, you do want to define it, right? Because otherwise it's going to be very confusing. What did I think of Alok when I first met him? I thought he was... Um, I thought he was either going to... I thought he was going to end up becoming a cult leader, honestly. That's what I first thought. Here I am, spearheading the cult. What did you do for Valentine's Day? Well, it's only 1.30, um, but Alec went and got flowers, and I made him an egg sandwich, and he made tea. So it's, I think, just small acts of service so far. It's hot, okay? Thank you. Okay. We can keep going? Yeah. Let's do it. Uh oh. You want to do, uh, I can do this one. My 24, my. Uh, I'm so jealous that you just get to hang out with chat three times a week. Dude, it's great. I don't want to hang out with chat three times a week. I, I want to stream more, to be honest. Yeah. Like, so I, I don't know about y'all, but like, I started playing Lost Ark. And that game is amazing. Um, the, the challenge is that, so someone was asking for a Disco Elysium playthrough with like commentary, which mm -hmm. I think would be a lot of fun. I think the challenge is that we kind of struggle because it's like some people come here for lectures or interviews or whatever, right? And so like I'm struggling because on the one hand, it's like I want to just, it's like I feel like I don't get to be a regular Twitch streamer, you know? Um, but I, I think it'd be great to just play Lost Ark. I think you can. Right? The, Alt account, I think, is a great idea. Uh, I, I don't know how to do that. But, um, but yeah, I, <laughs> I, would, I, I would love, maybe we'll, uh, but you have to also let me play. The what do you thing. mean let you play? No, no, you have to like let me play for time. Like, you know, I, I know, I mean, I know I have been playing, but I'm saying like, you know, that'll, it'll be like a stream. Like, so I can't just like stop, you know? What does that mean? It means that normally when I'm playing games, like if we need something, like if one of our children is... Right. I mean, know, I can't stop your has, children from needing you. Yeah, but you have to like cover for me and take care of them. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Okay. Not like every day. Not every day. Okay. Like we'll figure out a schedule. Eight I hours on do. a Saturday. All right. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So maybe we'll, maybe we'll see. We'll see, chat. I think we can get through some of, we've got, we've got kind of a very full schedule for the next couple of weeks with some coach training. Um, but I can, I can help you find some time. Okay. Um, okay. Let's keep going. So, ah. uh, my boyfriend is blaming his cheating on me. Oh, fun. Hi, Reddit. I caught my boyfriend of three years texting a past fuck buddy sexually explicit conversations. This has been going on for over a month. I think we've all seen these posts before, so I won't go into a ton of detail. The real problem is now he's blaming me for his una unhappiness in the relationship, and that's why he cheated. I didn't try hard enough. I never solved problems. I always argue. I don't believe he feels any real remorse, and this is probably what hurts the most. Sigh. Anyway, any tips or advice on how to regain my sanity and try to rebuild confidence? Edit to say, and this happened all on Valentine's Day. Ouch. Ouch. That's rough. That sucks. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't like that he's blaming her. Cheating is one thing, and it's obviously not great. Um, but blaming somebody else for kind of your misdeeds is... I feel like that's what makes this whole thing unsalvageable. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that, first of all, it's not... On Th this cheating is also pretty egregious. It's not like, oh, it happened once. This this feels unfixable. Um, regain my sanity. I think that's the big question, right? Yeah. So I think the first thing is that this is not that uncommon, right? So when we make bad decisions, we oftentimes want to provide rationalizations or justifications for them. So this is something that I've heard a lot, like professionally, um, that, you know, people will say like, oh, 
kind of you pushed me to cheat. Um, and so, for example, like the, the boyfriend is kind of accusing this person of didn't try hard enough, never solve problems, always argue. Um, and I know th this is going to sound kind of weird, but like there, there may be some truth to that. So, for example, like in a relationship, like if you think about someone who's going to cheat, chances are there's going to be something about the relationship that they're unhappy with, right? Right. Um, not necessarily. I mean, they could be perfectly happy with it and just want to cheat anyway. But so, so, it, and that's what can be so hard is like when you have a combination of something legitimately that's not perfect in the relationship, which is going to happen with every relationship. And then you have someone using that as a justification or rationalization. Because remember, when, when our mind justifies or rationalizes things, it doesn't justify with falsehood. It justifies with truth, right? But that's the tricky thing about the mind is that, like, it's going to justify in a very selective way. So this is where, like, you know, the simple response would be, like, you know, uh, if you thought I never solved problems, like, why not, like, talk about it, right? Like... Like, I, this is where even if, if person A is doing some things that are not perfect in the relationship, like arguing or not trying hard enough, whatever the hell that means, um, then like, how does that justify cheating, right? Like that doesn't, there's a huge logical misstep there that oftentimes once we start rationalizing or justifying, like we just sort of miss. And this is where if you've ever been in an argument with someone and they like, you know, criticize you for something, like what's your first response is to criticize them back, Right. So it's like, oh, like you didn't take out the trash. Well, like you don't take out the trash, like blah, 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 right? Like you don't, and that's just naturally what the mind does. That's what the ego does. So there's an ego component to this. It's kind of unfortunately common. I think the other sort of sad thing, and this is how you, if you want to regain your sanity, is like if, if your boyfriend says, or girlfriend says, you didn't try hard enough, so I cheated on you. It's like, do you want to be in that relationship to begin with? In the sense of like, you know, how hard do you have to try to prevent someone from cheating, right? I get sort of the sense that the boyfriend is not putting as much effort into the relationship. Like, and so the, it, in his mind, he may be in a weird way fair that if he's expecting his girlfriend to do 90% of the work and never solving problems, like if you're expecting your girlfriend to solve problems or your boyfriend to solve problems, like, that's the kind of expectation that I don't think will lead to a healthy relationship because I didn't try hard enough. I never solved problems. I always argue if in a relationship, the oper the subject of the sentence is not we or us, that's going to be a problem. And that's a fight that I don't think you can win, right? Like that's the kind of situation where if you kind of feel like, um, you know, if, if you get accused of not solving problems or not trying hard enough or always arguing, like the question, the response to that for your own sanity is what is my partner putting in, right? Because it's like shared responsibility. Solving problems in a relationship is not something that I have to do or she has to do. It's something that we have to like do together. That's the whole point of the relationship. So I, I think that a couple of things to remember if you're trying to regain your sanity is first is that people will justify their bad behavior by pointing out things that are somewhat legitimate, but are actually like not the whole story, right? So maybe you could work on your communication a little bit, but just because, you know, you can work on your communication doesn't justify his cheating. The next thing to think a little bit about is that like, if you're in a relationship where, where the person that you're with is not willing to like share responsibility for relationship problems, like I never solved problems, I didn't try hard enough, you know, that's the kind of thing where it's like, that's shared responsibility, right? Because it's a relationship. Yep. So that's where, you know, the fact that he doesn't feel any remorse, I think should sort of tell you in a weird way that like you're probably, you know, that's kind of weird. Like he cheated on you. If he really thought the relationship wasn't working out, the right move is just to break up with you, right? So to say, hey, this relationship isn't working out for me. Like I'm going to, it's not to like it's text people for me to sexually explicit con conversations. Like this. Why? It's hard for me to hear you say, like, this relationship isn't working out for me. <laughs> like, just those words coming mm. out of your mouth. Well, um, this relationship is working out for me great. This is great. Yeah, yeah. I like this. Love you. Love you too. Um, but what about regaining sanity and rebuilding confidence? Because that's like... Yeah, so I think oftentimes when we get dumped, we like... We accept the other person's perspective, but I think this is where it's important to remember that like, just because someone blames you for something doesn't mean that it's accurate. Right. Right. 
And so this breakup has a lot more to do with, in my opinion, I mean, maybe we're getting one side. Of, on the internet, you only get one side of the story, right? But, um, you know, what, the, what we're sort of hearing is that if there were problems in the relationship, we're not really hearing what that looked like in terms of solving problems or trying hard enough. Um, but it's very possible that there is, like we've been saying, there's some kernel of truth. So this is where, like, if you want to regain your sanity, anything that you could have improved on in the relationship, you kind of work on for the sake of your next relationship. But you also don't accept what this person says because at the end of the day, they were like sending sexually explicit texts to, you know, someone that they were sexually had a relationship with. So like, that's not on you, right? Like that's on them. Yeah. So I think a lot of the lost sanity comes from when we start to accept responsibility for other people's actions, which is what they try to do. Like, so when someone blames you, like they try to make you responsible for their actions, thereby absolving themselves of blame. And if you sort of don't let them do that, right? So hold them accountable for what they did and also accept accountability for what you did. I think that's ultimately how you become sane and then prepare yourself for a healthy relationship next time around. I think practically um, getting away from him, your mutual friends, like that environment for a little while would be good. I mean, this is... I don't know if it's like the most healthy coping mechanism or not, but personally, I would just want to be away from it. And that also means like social media, like just disengage from social media for a little bit. Um, I think what you're trying to do is get him out of your mental space and not um, spend your mental energy dwelling on what you did wrong, what like replaying all these arguments. I think it's going to happen. But I think it, it needs to be away from your day-to-day -day environment that you shared with this person. Next. Yeah. Dopamine detox. I see that in chat. Did, did we want to tell people where they can sign up for dopamine detox stuff? Um, so I think there's some kind of dopamine detox stuff going on on our Discord. I hear it's going pretty well. Uh, so this is a community-driven event to help people develop a healthier relationship with technology. So a lot of times if you're trying to like abstain from technology use, it's super, super challenging. So we have a community driven event that's going on right now that can help you kind of plan and figure out, okay, like what are you going to do on day one? What are you going to do on day two? Day two? What are you, you going to do on day three? Um, and it looks like it's a, at 11 a.m. Central time. On what day though? Is it every day? Every Friday at 11 a.m. Central time. So if y'all are interested in, in developing a healthier relationship it's with right technology. <laughs> Yeah, Detox that's what, from stream. If that's what you got to do, do it. No, I mean, that's, yeah. you know. That's good. I think that as much as I love chat and as much as it's nice if we have viewers, like if y'all spent a month not watching, not engaging with any screens, like I would be happy. Yeah. So what if our viewership goes down? Like that's not what we're here for. Terrible right? cult leaders. Yeah. So bad. I mean, ultimately, like it's for your benefit. And if yeah. stream helps you get there, then by all means watch. But if joining a dopamine detox and staying completely free of twitch or whatever else like that's we want you to be healthy happy right yeah D does everybody know what dopamine detox means um so i i don't know if people are super familiar with it but i think that y'all can show up on fridays at 11 and and kind of talk about it um i think i'm gonna do it I've been spending way too much time on social media lately. All right, I'm going to do it. Okay. Um, okay, let's move on. Yeah. So how do you converse with really attractive people? I frequently find myself just drifting away when talking to a person that really hits that bar of attractiveness. It's not even like I'm fantasizing about that person. But there's a part of me that just wants to sit and stare at the work of beauty that I'm looking at and not pay attention to a single word being said. And that in the past has come off really wrongly. To avoid such a situation from arising, I normally avoid contact and or act cold, but that is not what I want to do either. I just want to treat them like I would any other person because I think that it's unfair of me to treat someone like that for no fault of theirs. What causes this reaction? It is probably the res a result of some of there being some sexual attraction, but why does it result in such a reaction? 
Dr. K talked in a recent video about how he doesn't care that the other person in front of him is attractive or not. This blows my mind. How do you become a chat? And most importantly, what do, you, what, do I, what do you think I can consciously do to navigate that situation? Can you truly beat the ancient reptilian brain inside you? Should you? What do you think? This, this is what happens to me every single time. You know, people think that I'm a Chad, but every time I see you, it just, I lose sight of everything. I can't concentrate. I thought you were gonna... That makes you not a Chad. And I was like, excuse you. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Uh, I, mm, what do you think? I get tongue tied sometimes. When you are talking to me. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I don't. I thought that was a critical fail, Chad. I don't think that was a critical hit, right? So this is where, like, you know, you're not going to bat a hundred percent, which is fine. No, I mean, I think it. it like, you know, it's almost sometimes people are so attractive they're intimidating. And I, I wonder if this is more of like an intimidation thing than like a, oh my God, they're so attractive. I can't function. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, we can take some, so the, the mind and brain and sense organs tend to acclimatize to stimuli. So if you think about like, you know, if you walk into a house where there's food being cooked, the first thing that you smell is the food. But as an hour goes by, you're, you're, you will acclimatize that stimuli and you'll start kind of extinguishing it. Mm -hmm. So I, I think the first thing to consider is that, you know, you may have some kind of reaction, but that over time, that reaction should diminish. Okay. The second thing that I'd say is that, you know, how do you, so if you have some kind of reaction, whether it's to an attractive person or, you know, fear every time you step out your, outside your door or, you know being afraid to close your eyes when you go to sleep, like whatever kind of reactions you have, try to understand, like acknowledge that it's happening and try to understand like what's happening and where it's coming from. So I don't necessarily mean in like a deep rooted psychological sense, like what is the physiology of this reaction? So this is where a lot of times we automatically sort of shoot for the mental side, right? Oh my God, like what does this mean? Like mentally, am I intimidated, right? So that's a psychological interpretation. But oftentimes our, our mood, our mental state in our body will go hand in hand. So when you feel like crying, you're going to feel like a lump in your throat. You'll feel tightness in your chest. When you feel nervous, there'll be like butterflies in your stomach, right? So the, our physiology is a big part of our experience of things, right? It's not just mental. So the other thing that you can always try doing is like breathing into it. So we've done several meditations about this that are sort of like oriented towards emotions. But, you know, if you see someone and you kind of notice yourself having this reaction, I wouldn't avoid eye contact or act cold. I mean, I know you kind of have to it maybe at the beginning, but this is where it's just like take a deep breath and kind of sigh. You know, it may seem a little bit weird to do that if you're like in a conversation with someone. <laughs> Please don't do that. Um, do that like as you're walking through the door. Yeah. Don't, don't, it's not going to help you. Um, and then, and then kind of just notice where, yeah, maybe don't do that. <laughs> like I said, we're not batting a hundred today, chat. Um, yeah, just go. Right. And they'll do that. And then, and then you'll be, then you'll be totally fine. Um, so yeah, so I, I'd say, you know, just notice that, that reaction, allow yourself to have the reaction oftentimes through suppressing our reactions to things, that's how we keep it there. So you want the reaction to kind of wash through you if that sort of makes sense, right? So what you want to do is like, oh, like, okay, so here, here we go again, right? So you don't want to say that. You just kind of want to notice it and just kind of, right? Just kind of take a deep breath and just like engage with the person, sort of start to think a little bit about, okay, what, what are they actually saying? Like, let me try to really focus and concentrate on what this person is saying and interact with them as a human being. And as you sort of breathe a little bit, as you acknowledge what's happening, as you kind of let that reaction wash through you, hopefully you'll start to just be able to talk to them. And the good news is that it's kind of interesting. I just realized another thing. So if you're avoiding eye contact and remaining cold, you're not giving your mind. Oh, this is actually really interesting. Mm -hmm. You're not giving your mind any kind of distraction. So this could, in a weird way, make things worse because yeah. if you engage in a conversation 
and like the conversation is engaging, then your mind will be able to distract itself from whatever stimuli you're kind of dealing with. And you can actually like talk to the person, right? So be present with them. And the more that you kind of avoid eye contact and act cold, like the more like the only thought in your head that you're sort of experiencing is that drifting away around their attractiveness. So interestingly enough, I wonder if that's actually like not is, is hurting more than helping. Okay. I've got a couple of like practical tips. Wear sunglasses, like give yourself a little bit of grace on the eye contact and stuff. Um, the second is smile because when you smile and the other person smiles back at you, that'll help you relax, I think. And you won't be like, oh my God, they're so attractive. They're so attractive. They're so attractive. Oh my God. I think if you can kind of go into it with a smile and like get some positive feedback from that person. Don't do that fake smile though. It's fake smile. allocates the smile. Do this one. That's a better smile. You guys see the difference? (laughs) Don't do a fake smile. You want to show them the fake one? That's the fake one. And this is the real one. You guys see the difference? I've had to fake smile a lot these days. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, but yeah, I think getting some positive feedback so it doesn't feel so like you're talking into a blank wall. Um, sunglasses, smile. I feel like I had a third one, but y'all are so attractive, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um yeah, so I, I think we're about done. You want to do like one or two more? What do you think? We can. You want to just hang out with chat? They had a lot of questions. About what? About everything. I mean, we have, we're going to have to wrap up in a few minutes. Yeah, but why don't we just hang out with them for Lost five, ten time. minutes instead sure. of sure. another subreddit? Yeah, so what are y'all, what are y'all playing on Lost Ark? Like, what's good? I'm playing a, a sorceress wizard i'm playing a dwarf you're not do but you want there are no dwarves in last okay time. i was like how, how, how long can i get away with it <laughs> <laughs> which class is best chat dwarves is is pay to win sorceress is sorceress pay to win Mostly Team Dwarf. <laughs> team Dwarf? Dude, that'd be awesome. I'd play Dwarf in Lost Ark if there was one. Is there one? I may just be mistaken. Classic psychiatrist using magic. You know what's epic is Deep Rock Galactic. Hmm. If you want to play a Dwarf, you should play Deep Rock. I'll play with you. Yeah, let's play Deep Rock. Okay. Our kids like it too. Yeah, they're <laughs> they're really intense about it. I'll look, um, he puts them on his lap and then you could, you do like the controlling, right? And then they just dig. No, no, no. So, so they know, they know the three buttons. So Uh they have, they can shoot, Uh they can jump and they can use things Uh like the interaction. So I will aim and I'll move and they'll perform all the actions. They like freak out. He'll be like, get him, Avi, get him, get him. And I'll hear Avi like, ah, they're coming. Yeah, it's, dude, it's really great. The one one of the kids really loves Skyrim and like kind of likes it too much, so we had to stop playing it because it was like. But she's totally into like dual wielding axes. Like I was like, "Oh, do you want to use a sword?" And she's like, "No, <laughs> I want two axes." <laughs> and she likes. Uh, she also likes to use different kinds of magic, so she's super into it. But we're I I started playing Pokemon with them. Yeah, that's they seem to seems to be like good enough for them. Yeah. They're actually able to play that. And then Avi tilt or VR tilts pretty hard on Mario, right? Mom, get it, get it. Why yeah, did but you die? I, Jump better. I think that's just she's she's her her tilting pretty hard on Mario is a consequence of her like actually understanding the game. So I think it's actually a good milestone. Oh, okay. Right, because now she like understands the mechanics and she understands like when to be frustrated. And, you know, and I, I was like trying to explain to her, I was like, you can't bubble because like I, I could die on this level, right? Like, so I, you know, I need you to like be alive so that I can respawn. 
And she's like, no, but I'll just bubble if like if things are getting <laughs> I was like, no. She like does not wait. She's like, mom, we're going. She'll just go. Oh yeah. She has no presence. She yeah. has no idea of like where other people are. And so she'll just leave us behind. Indeed. Dota. Yeah. I, I don't know if they're ready for that. Nobody's ready for that. That too. I was surprised because I thought that in Dota, they would like, like Crystal Maiden, right? Cause they're super into Frozen. But they like Avi likes like Viper and all of the monstrous creatures. She has a lot of monster empathy. That's yeah, it's really interesting. All right, you want to do one more then? Any questions in chat, or are we good? Yeah, I think um, we're, we're gonna have to wrap up. So, chat, who do y'all want to raid? Oh. Thanks for dropping by, Guppy Face. Hassan? Asman? Dude, I was watching Asman Gold stream the other day. He had 400,000 viewers and he couldn't even log into Lost Ark. Yeah. It was... It was... Uh, it was... Okay, we can... Uh, who is anyone else doing like um, uh, uh, Valentine's Day r related content? Raid Alinity? I haven't heard... People asking to raid Alinity in a while. How do you defeat FOMO? I like that question. What do you think? How do you, how do you, okay, we'll raid Alinity. How do you defeat FOMO? Last question. Um, in my opinion, like I, I get FOMO when I'm trying to see what other people are doing and like, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to do that. And the best thing for me is like, well, what do I want to do? And then I, I host the event or I like throw the thing or I start the company or whatever. So I think for me, it's initiative that helps me with FOMO instead of like trying to f see what other people are doing and catch in on that, um, to kind of make my own thing to do. Yeah. I know this sounds kind of weird, but it's part of the way that i deal with FOMO is just to recognize that most things in life I'm going to miss out on, right? If you really think about it, like you're going to miss out, like of all of the experiences that human beings can have, you're going to miss out on, you know, the vast, vast, vast majority. Like think about all of the bread that has been baked in the history of humanity and all of the delicious fresh loaves that people have kind of eaten and you're not going to get to eat most of those. And this was really hard for me, especially when I was like, when I started to get like serious professionally, because I'd miss things mm -hmm. like I'd miss like gaming launches and stuff like that. Right. So FF 14 is something that I really like missed out on because I've heard that if I had been playing FF 14 over the last like three years, it would have been one of the most awesome like gaming experiences, but that's just, you know, you're going to miss that. That's okay. And this is where I think a big part of FOMO is the idea of like, what's truly limited? Did I miss out on FF14? Sure. Was it epic? Certainly sounds like it. And like Lost Ark is out now. And it's not like there won't be other epic RPG experiences available, you know? So I, it, it's okay to miss out on things. Like life is not really about trying to do everything. It's about really appreciating like what you have and what your opportunities are because the vast majority of stuff you're going to miss. I know it sounds kind of weird, but like, just really think about that. And it's okay to miss stuff. It's not like opportunities are really limited, right? Oh, you didn't get to go to dinner this week. Like there will be more dinners in the future. There will be more games in the future. There will be more things in the future. Oh, I really want to play Lost Ark. I really want to play. I really want to play. Like I'm going to stay up till 5 a.m. It's like, what, what do you think is going to happen tomorrow? Like you're going to, you can play tomorrow. It's not like servers are going down in a week, right? So what's the rush? Never know when the servers are going to go down though. It's true, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we should raid Svand because he's your queen. Okay, if Svand is the queen, then we shall r raise, uh, raid him. So we'll see y'all um, probably on Wednesday, I think. Yeah. Um, I think we're back to a regular streaming schedule, so we'll go ahead, um, send Svand some love. Looks like he's playing Lost Ark, and unfortunately, I doubt I will have time to, but we'll see y'all later. Oh, yeah, awesome. Take care. Bye, happy Valentine's Love y'all. Happy Valentine's Day.